So Football Manager's had an update. They've updated the match engine before some of the biggest games here at Newcastle. We've got Manchester United away, Tottenham at home, a chance to wrap up the league or potentially a chance to bottle it and ensure it goes down to the wire. Yeah, nervous for this one. Let's get into it. So yes, gang, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Apologies there wasn't a Newcastle episode yesterday. I'll be honest, I was just too sad <laughs> after the previous games against Juventus. If you missed them for whatever reason, I don't want to acknowledge what happened, but we have to talk about it. Kylian Mbappe missed a penalty. We lost 2-1. And to be frank, we were absolutely amazing without scoring. Um... But yeah, we didn't score. You can't win football matches if you don't score goals, it turns out. The good news is, since then, things have gone significantly better, as they have generally in the league over the course of this season. We beat Stoke 6-1, Burnley 3-1, Norwich 4-2, Everton 5-1. And where does that leave us in the league? You might wonder. Well, it leaves us currently top of the league, six points clear of Manchester United. And, uh, well, if we win today against them, we will be... What, nine points ahead of them with three games remaining? If we win the second game, the title is completely wrapped up, signed, sealed and delivered. Um, if we lose both these games, Manchester United could be even on points with us going into the last two games of the year. And as I already mentioned, there is a new match engine. If you've not played Football Manager this week, there was an update uh, today, today or yesterday. I can't remember. All the days have blurred into one as of late. What I do know is today's the first episode with said new match engine. I have no idea how we're going to perform in it. I'm just going to cross my fingers and hope that we're going to be fine. In terms of the team that we're going to go with, I'm going to go with the team that let me down previously. <laughs> I think this is the exact team just about that played the second leg against Juventus. Ramsdale in goal, Gavardi, Altamori and Fafana. Wingbacks in Davies and Livramento. Havertz and Bellingham in the middle. Yusuf Demir with Aguiar and also Mbappe up top. There is an a temptation, to be honest, to bring in Adiemi. For a gear, but I do wonder if we're going to lack the aerial threat then. Of course, corners have been tweaked in the latest match engine update. There's also been some general balance changes. I don't think it's been talked about specifically. Um, I'm wondering how much crosses have changed, really, because crosses have been pretty prevalent so far in FM22's match engine. I think we'll go with Adiemi and Mbappe today. We'll experiment, go with two players with no real aerial ability, and if they fare well, we will conclusively say even though we can't really prove it, that crossing was changed. So we've won every game since we last year, but of course this is still a mighty big game for us. Manchester United's form in general has been rather good. They're not conceding many. They did get knocked out to Monaco in the Champions League, but besides that, they've strung together a really long and beaten run in the Premier League. In fact, their last defeat came against us when we beat them 5-1. So yeah, this is going to be hard at Old Trafford today. And of course, as tends to be the case here against Manchester United, Musiala and Marino both playing against us today. Our former men, we've had a pretty good record against them as of late. Let's see and hope we can keep it going today. 15 minutes gone here. It's been a very close game, but now they've got a corner that we've got to deal with. And uh, they've scored a near post header after they've been changed. Gvoz Denovic has scored the goal. I don't recognise that name. That sounds like a regen. He's wearing the number 30 shirt. What a header that is across goal, by the way. That was sensational. I want to find out more about this man. Oh, of course, we've got a tribute masking on, um, so we know absolutely nothing about him, but he was signed from Partizan for 4.9 million. He's not played much for Manchester United. Of course he's playing today. Of course he scored against me. Thank you, football manager. Very cool. Okay, corner of our own. Yusuf Demir whips in. Tamori goes down. Is there going to be a penalty given here? We're going to the VAR screen. I feel like this doesn't happen all that often. So save at the moment. He's going over to the monitor. Is the penalty going to be maintained here? Or is he going to change his mind, the referee? Tamori went down in a heap. But was it a dive? Was he actually shoved? What does the big screen say? Penalty awarded. Breathe a sigh of relief, everyone. They fix near post corners, apparently, but of course, first game back in the new match engine, two highlights resulting from corners. Are we going to score this one? We are. From the penalty spot, Karim Adiemi tucks it away. Goal number 42 for the season. Of course, he has been kind of sharing minutes with Mbappe as the advance forward for us. Nice to see them play alongside each other today, and nice to see him get on the score sheet as well in a live com. 
I feel like a lot of his goals this year have come against lesser opposition in, you know, the league, in the Champions League group stages as well. Um, I feel like he's not really had too much time in the spotlight this year, the Ballon d'Or winner, often coming on off the bench. He's had a bit of a say in this game, but at half time, not a great deal of highlights. It's 1 1. Just encourage the players at half time. I don't think we need to get too shouty shouty here. We've been a, a reasonably good match for Manchester United. They've had two shots on target. One was that, obviously, header from the corner. Edging out possession away from home is always nice. And uh, well, I was about to make some changes as we're only 26 minutes away from the full time whistle. But our highlights begun. It started. I'll let it finish before we make any changes. Tamori puts in a tackle, but it falls straight to Marcus Rashford, who hits it. Wow. Wow. That was a good finish. I don't really know what to say other than wow. That was incredible. I mean, Tamori is left on his ass in a heap as Manchester United break away. Puts in a tackle. Falls straight to Rashford. Still got a lot to do. Players swarming all around him. And then he smashes it into the top corner like that. I don't even know what to say. What I will say is I think we need to make some changes. Mbappe's not played well in this game. I'm going to move Adiyami into the Mbappe position and take off Killian. I'm going to bring on Aguilar in his place. Elsewhere, Livermento on a booking scares me. We're going to bring in Mbabu. Got a bit of a redemption arc. I feel like Mbabu after his own goal against Juventus last time out. As for the midfield, Jude Bellingham's not having the best of games at roaming playmaker. But I don't want to make all my changes yet. I think we need to keep one in our back pocket just in case of a sending off. Bizarrely, I don't really want to change much here. I feel like we've been the better team for large spells in this game. And, uh, well, hopefully we're going to be able to get a goal if we just stick to the game plan. Although Musiala gets the ball, gives it to Sancho. I think he's offside here. Now, I know there was, kind of in the previous match engine, a tell. If the linesman started moving, there was a good chance it was going to be given. That's been changed in the latest update. The, the linesman is no longer going to give it away. My gut instinct was he was offside. And as we can see here, that line is not drawn in the right place. But Jaden Sancho was definitely offside. Okay, 14 minutes left here. I've really got to push this game a little bit harder. Try and up the tempo perhaps a little bit. Let's look to distribute to flanks. Distribute it quickly. Press higher. Press harder. We've got 14 minutes to really turn up the temperature here at Old Trafford and try and force the ball into the back of the net. And well, we might try and do it right here. 78 minutes on the clock for Fafana to Bellingham. Gets dispossessed, but Fafana's still there. Now with Kai Havertz. Goes back to Tamori. Fafana inside to Demir. Really nice build-up play here. The ball passed around superbly. Aguiar's through, and he's hit the outside of the post. And it's gone out for a goal kick. The Mexican looks so composed there as he went for the little dink, but the woodwork denies him. With five minutes left, Manchester United still defending a lead here. If we lose this game, we cannot mathematically win the title today. It will go to goal difference. And if we lose against Tottenham, then we do need to start to worry. Our goal difference is way, way better than Manchester United's. But if we could rescue a draw here. It could save the season. It could avoid all the nerves, the unnecessary pressure of it going down to the wire. Fafana stepping out with the ball. Plays it to Mbabu, cuts inside, Luke Shaw, crunching tackle, wins it, but Adiemi is going to keep that alive through sheer willpower to Mir. Mbabu finds himself in the middle, and it's in the back of the net. That is his redemption arc. It's his first goal of the year. Maybe I can't quite forgive him for the Juventus' own goal, but we have to give him a little bit of credit. Adiemi's effort to get that ball and keep it in play was sublime. The run by Mbabu... It's like he just sees some green grass to run into. Onana has had an absolute nightmare in goal, but it's 2-2. We've got the goal that we needed. I'm going to take off Bellingham, who's wound up and also very tired. Declan Rice is coming in, and I'm just going to let this play out. I'm going to stay on the kind of more pressing style of play, see if we can force an error to get the winner. We haven't managed that. What we have managed to do is secure a massive point. This Manchester United team have not lost in a very, very long time. Created a lot of chances, managed to score two of them, probably did enough on the balance of play to be worth that. And what it does mean is we go into our next game against Tottenham, who are down in ninth, knowing that if we win it, we will secure the Premier League today. Anyway, we're going to go straight forward to that Tottenham game. You might be able to hear it. My voice is starting to go. I don't want it to go before the end of the video. So let's hop forward Tottenham at home, six days away. Let's win this title with style.
Okay, folks, we are back six days in the future, taking on Tottenham, a win at home here. The league is done. We don't have to worry about the last couple of games in the league, of course. Still an FA Cup final to look forward to. And, uh, well, we have also got a lot of money to spend. Um, I guess at this point it's worth mentioning, of course, that whilst this is our final year... We are going to holiday forward and see how the team does over kind of five and ten years without us. But additionally, I'm just wondering, do people want me to do one last transfer window um, as a transfer special where I can basically do as many transfers as I can to just try and set the team up for success over that simming forward period? Let me know if you'd like to see that or not. We have £200 million to spend. I feel like it might be quite a nice send-off, given the nature of this entire save game, to have one last kind of transfer special. We go a bit bananas, try and fill in all the gaps and set it up so that an AI manager can swoop in and take all the glory. Anyway, speaking of glory, we want to be winning the Premier League today against Tottenham. Um, last time we won the title, the last game was off-camera. Um... I'd like to see us lift the trophy in this episode. That would be ideal. Uh, in terms of the team that we're going to go with, we're actually going to go with the exact team that played the previous game against Manchester United. That does mean that Mbappe and Adiemi are going to play up top alongside one another. And, uh, well, let's not mess around too much. Let's get straight into this. My voice is starting to go. Bit concerned it might not last to the end of the video. So, yeah, no more messing around. Let's get straight into this. Okay, six minutes in. It's, it's a bit of a kick clash, isn't it? It's a bit of a kit clash. Can I can we get away with this? I might have to go to 2D, folks. How do the players know who to pass to? That's what I'm wondering. Was Tottenham playing in their third kit for whatever reason? You know what? We'll let this highlight play out. And whilst, you know what? You can kind of see the, the kind of players, obviously, of our team because they've got the white backs with the striped shirts. It's not ideal. Also, St. Maximan is playing against us. He's going to want revenge. He's got his revenge. He scores after seven minutes. The former Newcastle man showboats in front of the Geordie faithful. There's bottles being thrown at him from the sideline. It's like we're at a Liga game. The fans are going crazy. I mean, was it a good goal? Was it bad marking? I'll let you decide. Seven minutes in, we're behind. I'm going to 2D. I've had enough. If I'm not mistaken, the very first league game we did of this Let's Play in the beta, the ball wasn't visible in 3D, so we had to go to 2D then. So if anything, this is just a little bit of a throwback, going back to the 2D once more. We started with 2D in the league. It's going to end with 2D in the league. Livramento bringing it forward. Bellingham, Fafana, lovely build-up play. The wide centre-back tries to pull it back. It's intercepted, but well, the ball is not away from danger. Gavardiol might look to get forward here. He does. He's going to overlap with Davies. He threads it through to Adiemi, who hammers it home. What a finish that is. What a goal that was. It looked delightful in, free, in 2D. I can't wait to see it in 3D. Um, the ball by Davies looked really, really nice here. The finish by Adiemi as well was smart, to say the very least. Ball played forward. Adiemi, one touch out of his feet. Left foot bangs it into the roof of the net. We weren't behind for long. Corner here. Yusuf Demir whips it in. Tamori flicks on Mbappe. Back post, goal number 45 of the season for him. I wonder if either of Mbappe or Adiemi might have a chance of getting to 50 for the season. I feel like it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Ball flicked on at the near post and into the back of the net it goes for Kylian Mbappe. Not going to score an easier goal than that all year. Okay, Alfonso Davies with a throw in, Demir. If we could get one or two more, just give ourselves some breathing room. Allow me to relax. Bellingham keeps it alive after a deep ball in. But Spurs managed to deal with it. But we're going to bring it forward once more. Ball to Mbappe. Can he pull it across? He can't. And that's because he's been fouled. Craig Porson's given the penalty. Just awaiting official confirmation. I mean, in 2D, it looks stonewall. But quite what you can see in 2D is somewhat limited. But no, the penalty is going to be given. Adiemi is going to be the man over it. Can he bag his second of the game? With 10 minutes left of the first half. He steps up. He hits it. Finds the bottom corner. It's 3-1 here, and whilst it's not quite game, set, and match, we might be able to start the party. That late, late equaliser last game for Mbappé has enabled us into this situation where in front of the home fans, we can hopefully see out the Premier League title. By the way, Manchester United playing Brentford away today. Not expecting them to get us a result. Really, we have to do this ourselves, and well, we've done it ourselves thus far in this game here. Four minutes left of the half. Of course, if... Tottenham get one, maybe we start to panic a little bit. St. Maximan has already got one against us, and he's the man pulling the strings in the middle at the moment. 
Norrington Davies is bringing it forward, but Liveramento just barges him off the ball, wrestles back uh, possession, and now we're going to look to build it back out from the back. What can we do here? Tamori and Guardiola having their own little game. Fafana, Bellingham, Demir, Mbappe. It's sensational passing. Unfortunately, the ball for Mbappe just lacking a little bit, but we'll build from the back again. There's something quite satisfying about watching the patterns of play in 2D. I don't know, you can just appreciate it a little bit more, the movement off the ball of everyone and the finishing ability of Kylian and Mbappe ain't too shabby either. 4-1 here. It's quickly turning into a rout. Kylian Mbappe plays it to Demir. He keeps the ball, gives it to Livramento. Mbappe keeps his run going from deep, chests it down, gets it onto his right foot, slots it away, makes it 4-1. And, uh, well, we are singing in the rain. And before long, we're going to be lifting a Premier League trophy in the rain, I suspect. It's been a dominant half, taken the few chances that came our way. And, uh, yeah, we look good. This year, it has been kind of crazy how many goals we've managed to score in the league. And... I'm pleased to report we've been able to keep that form going here. Also, Brentford are now beating Manchester United 2-0. So suddenly, this game here I actually don't think matters at all if things stay as they are in that other game. But we will look to just make a couple of changes here. A few tired legs. No point in risking anyone, really. Um, we'll also take off Bellingham for Rice and move Havertz to the Roman playmaker role. Wouldn't mind getting one or two more goals. It's been a very quiet second half, but to be honest, that kind of suits us. Havertz whips it into Mori, heads just wide of the post. Considering that uh, near post corners and corners in general have been tweaked a little bit in the new match engine update, our superior talent in the air and just from corners is really showing. We're creating quite a lot still, I feel like, in this game. Oh my word, St. Maximan almost scored a superb solo goal there, but for the ball being tipped over the crossbar by Ramsdale. Now we have a corner of our own to deal with. And well, deal with it, we most certainly will. Mbappe, can he turn his man? He can't. Adam's going to pick up a buck in there. That was a very cynical foul to stop the breakaway. But time is just trickling away here. There's a matter of minutes left. Nothing happened in the remainder of the game. And uh, do we not get the trophy ceremony because I've watched in 2D? Is that a thing? Oh, because we watched in 2D, we don't get to watch the trophy get lifted. Oh, it's a disaster. I mean, what an anticlimactic way to end things. Manchester United lose to Brentford. It's the first defeat they've had in absolutely forever. We win 4-1. What it does mean is with two games left of the year, we cannot be caught. And Mbappe gets man of the match. And uh, well, with it, we secure our second successive Premier League title. And uh, that's not too bad. Shay Given is praising me. That's what I want to see. Back-to-back -back Premier League titles. And I hope... Whoever our successor is going to be can keep this winning habit going. But anyway, and this isn't the final episode of the season. It's not a fond farewell just yet. As I said, we've got one final game to play. It's the FA Cup final. That is going to be coming your way next time out as part of kind of an end of season, an end of series wrap up. We'll go through stuff like the best 11, um, some of the heroes of the save game and all that good stuff. As I mentioned earlier, please do let me know, should we do another transfer special? Even if we're not the man to use the squad, there is a significant sum of money here that we could very easily spend to try and set this team up for long-term success long after I leave the club. Let me know what you think. If you've enjoyed today's video, as always, do drop a like on it. I'm going to go take some Lem Sip. I'm going to go drink a lot of water. My throat is killing me. Hopefully, if it's not completely gone, we'll be back again for tomorrow with more. And well, until then, take care. It is me, Jack, and I'll see you all on the next one. I'm out.